ever feel like um, when you're giving a presentation, all your ideas are kind of jumbled up. Yeah. You've got all this awesome stuff to share, but the delivery just doesn't flow. Right. It's like you're fumbling through a messy drawer, you know, trying to find a matching pair of socks. I know exactly what you mean. Turns out there's a whole art to organizing your thoughts, like a secret blueprint for a speech that blows everyone away. Mm. We're diving deep into excerpts from Organizational Patterns Public Speaking to uncover the secrets of captivating your audience, expert speaker. I am ready to unlock these secrets. Where do we even begin? Well, imagine you're building a house. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't just start piling bricks on top of each other, yeah. right? You need a plan, some structure. Yeah. These organizational patterns are like blueprints for your speech. They provide the structure to arrange your ideas logically, yeah. making it way easier for your audience to follow along. Okay, so no more rambling on and losing my audience in a sea of disjointed thought. Exactly. It's about guiding them smoothly from point A to point B. Yeah. Like we're all on this exciting journey together. Right. Speaking of journeys, let's start with the first pattern. The chronological pattern. Sounds pretty self-explanatory, but I bet there's more to it than meets the eye. You got it. The chronological pattern is about arranging your main points in the order they occur in time. Think of it like telling a story from beginning to end, yeah. Okay. It's perfect for historical topics, biographical speeches, or even explaining a process step by step. Makes sense. The source material gives a fantastic example using Oprah Winfrey's career. Okay. By presenting the key stages of her life in chronological order, from her childhood in rural Mississippi to becoming a media mogul, we see how her journey unfolded over time. It's amazing how such a simple structure can make a complex life story like Oprah's so much easier to understand, even inspiring. Right. Okay, so chronological is great for anything with a clear timeline. What about when you have a topic with lots of different facets? What then? That's where the topical pattern comes in handy. This pattern is your go-to when you need to break down a subject with distinct subtopics. Okay. Imagine you're giving a presentation about, say, the benefits of a new software. You could have separate sections dedicated to its user friendliness, its advanced features, its affordability, and so on. Each subtopic gets its own moment in the spotlight, all while contributing to the bigger picture. That makes total sense. It's like how our brains naturally categorize information. Exactly. We do it all the time without even realizing it. The source provides a great example with College of the Canyons and their student services. They break it down into these neat categories. Financial aid, academic support, career counseling, you name it. It's all about creating that clear, organized structure that makes it easy for your audience to digest. Kind of like a delicious, multi-layered cake. So far, so good. These patterns are like having a secret organizational weapon for my thoughts. <laughs> they really are. What's next on our deep dive into speech structuring brilliance? Let's dive into the spatial pattern. This one's all about location and those physical relationships between things. Imagine you're describing the layout of a university campus, just like the University of Georgia example in the text. Okay, I like it. You could structure your speech spatially, say by starting with North Campus, then moving to West Campus, East Campus, and finally South Campus. Ooh, that creates such a vivid mental map. I can practically picture myself strolling across campus as you describe each area. Exactly. It's like taking your audience on a guided tour using words. And by emphasizing those spatial relationships between different buildings or landmarks, you make the information way more memorable and easier to recall later. I'm already thinking about how helpful this would have been for my history presentations back in college. Mm -hmm. Instead of memorizing dry facts, I could have transported my audience to ancient Rome or recreated the battlefields of the Civil War. See. The power of spatial organization. Right. This is revolutionizing how we think about presentations. Okay, we've got one more pattern to explore, right? The causal pattern. Tell me everything. It's all about cause and effect, right? Like unraveling a mystery, showing how one thing leads to another. Okay. You can either present the cause and then its effect, or flip it around, start with the effect, and then reveal the cause. Ooh, starting with the effect, that's interesting. Um, it's like those crime shows, how they always start with the murder. Exactly. Who did it? Yeah. And then they rewind to show you how it all unfolded. And the source uses a really impactful example. The 1994 Northridge earthquake. Okay. They talk about how starting with the devastating effects, like the loss of life and billions of dollars in damage, really grabs the audience's attention. Wow. They're immediately invested and want to know, like, what caused this? How did this happen? That's brilliant. So instead of just presenting the facts, you're creating intrigue, suspense. Okay, I'm adding that to my toolkit. But... um. 
Could you use any of these patterns for persuasive speech? Absolutely. All four patterns can be used for both informative and persuasive speeches, but some do lend themselves more naturally to persuasion. Think about it. If you're trying to convince someone of something, you need a clear, logical structure to guide their thinking. Right, like you're building a case, presenting the evidence. Exactly. And leading them to your verdict. Yeah. So which patterns are the persuasion powerhouses? Well, the source specifically mentioned cause and effect and problem solution as being particularly effective for persuasion. Okay. Like, when you present a problem and then offer a solution, you're essentially leading the audience towards a particular action or way of thinking. Makes sense. You're tapping into their desire for a resolution. Yeah. Right, like a better outcome. Exactly. And the same goes for that cause-effect pattern, especially when used strategically. Okay. By establishing a clear link between a cause and its effect, you can subtly sway the audience's opinions or even motivate them to act. Interesting. Let's say you're giving a speech about climate change. You could start with the devastating effects and then connect them to human actions. It creates a sense of urgency, responsibility. It's all about that subtle art of influence. But you'd have to be careful not to manipulate your audience. You hit the nail on the head. Ethics are crucial, especially when using persuasive techniques. The source emphasizes the importance of being transparent with your audience. Right. Let them know you're presenting a particular perspective, but always be mindful of presenting information fairly and responsibly. Honesty. Transparency for the win. So we've got all these amazing patterns, but are there any situations where one might be a more strategic choice than another? Absolutely. Think of it like choosing the right tool for the job. Okay. If you're explaining a historical event or a step-by-step -step process, chronological is your winner. If you're breaking down a complex topic into digestible chunks, the topical pattern's your friend, describing a physical space, spatial pattern to the rescue. And when you want to emphasize cause and effect, perhaps to make a persuasive point, the causal pattern is your go-to. This is all making so much sense. I feel like I'm finally cracking the code of speech organization. But before we wrap things up, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier, adapting these patterns to your audience. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation. Absolutely not. The source really stresses the importance of audience awareness. Okay. It's about understanding your audience's background knowledge, their interests, even their preferred learning styles. What works for a room full of scientists might fall flat with a group of artists. So it's not just about choosing the right pattern in isolation, but considering how it will resonate with your specific audience. Exactly. It's about meeting them where they are and guiding them on a journey that's both informative and engaging. It's like you're tailoring a suit. You take the basic framework and make adjustments based on the individual's measurements and preferences. Yeah, that's a great analogy. It's about crafting your message to fit your audience. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. We've gone from feeling lost in a sea of jumbled thoughts to having these incredible blueprints for structuring speeches that captivate and inspire. We explored the chronological, topical, spatial, and causal patterns yeah. and how to choose the most strategic approach for both informative and persuasive speaking. Right, and we've learned it's not just about what you say, but how you say it and how your audience will receive it. Exactly. But before we let our amazing listener go, there's one more golden nugget from the source I want to touch on experimenting with these patterns. Yes, don't be afraid to play around with them, mix and match. See what feels most natural and effective for you, for your unique message and audience. These patterns, they aren't rigid rules. They're more like flexible guidelines. So it's about finding what works best for you, helps you deliver your message with clarity, confidence, and impact. Exactly. It's about unlocking your full potential as a communicator. This entire deep dive has been like unlocking a treasure chest of communication secrets. We unpacked these four powerful patterns from organizational patterns, public speaking, and learned how to wield them effectively. But most importantly, we emphasize the power of audience awareness in crafting engaging and impactful presentations. It's true. Remember, it's not just about delivering information. It's about creating an experience for your audience. And for our listeners, as you gear up for that next presentation or speech, keep those organizational patterns in mind. Experiment. Find what resonates and watch your communication skills reach new heights. What if organizing your next presentation with one of these patterns transformed how your message landed? Keep us posted on your aha moments along the way. After all, mastering the art of communication is a journey we're all on together.